Welcome back, everyone. So I wanted to come back to this topic because I know that most of us here are fascinated by the idea that some of what we think are mountains and naturally formed mazes around the world are petrified or fossilized remains of giant ancient trees. And so what I want to do here is as we look at the geology, I want to take a closer look at the cultural and historical clues that could further support this idea. So here's the thing. Trees don't die simply because they get old. Many species can keep growing as long as their internal systems keep working and the environment allows it. The limit isn't in the age of the tree. There are physics and biology. As a tree gets taller and wider, it has to solve some problems. Moving water upward against gravity, supporting its own weight, surviving wind storms, internal decay. Even today, the tallest trees we know, like coast redwoods, are already pushing those limits. They're near the maximum height where that capillary action, that transpiration and internal pressure can realistically move water to the top under current earth conditions. If the environmental conditions were different with higher atmospheric pressure, higher oxygen levels, lower gravity stress, or a much wetter global climate, such as a global mist, then the constraints change. In Earth's distant past, we know for a fact that plants and insects reached much larger sizes than today. Giant ferns, massive horse tails, giant insects with wingspans over two feet existed because conditions allowed biological systems to operate at a larger scale, you see? So the idea that trees could grow far larger than anything we see now isn't fantasy, it's grounded in real biology. Because it doesn't matter how a giant anything came to be, it is the environment that still has to be able to sustain its existence. That said, reaching truly colossal mountain-sized scales would likely require more than just time. There would have to be a different earth system different gravity, different atmospheric density, different biological mechanisms for nutrient and water transport. Without those changes, a tree would eventually collapse under its own weight, fail to move water efficiently, and it would just be structurally unstable long before reaching mesa scale proportions. So the honest answer is this. A tree growing indefinitely under today's earth conditions would hit a hard ceiling, but under ancient or altered planetary conditions, much larger, bizarre scales may have been biologically possible. And that's why the question isn't really, could a tree grow that big, but were the rules of earth always the same as they are now? The answer, no. When you take a look at formations through maps, you know, overlays and aerial photography, you will see rivers that mimic root systems, mesas with perfectly flat tops and vertical walls that rise like the sides of a giant sawed off tree. Each of these clues together, it paints a picture of a sudden high energy force at work, a force capable of altering the earth. 
So if we look at the sediment, right, in many areas, the layers of soil and rock are stacked in ways that appeared it happened very fast, almost as if the ground beneath the formations was buried in an instant. So rapid burial not only preserves the shapes of whatever was beneath it, but also creates conditions for fast petrification, locking organic and mineral structures in place before they can erode away. But you need an extreme amount of pressure at the same time. So you need a fast burial and under extreme amounts of pressure, which would only come from the pressure of water. When you overlay these ancient sediment layers with modern examples from recent floods, there are parallels. In both cases, water moves massive amounts of material quickly. It will actually reshape the landscape and leave behind traces that can just remain there for thousands or even millions of years, like a scar. So we already know that the geography on this planet can change literally overnight. Now there's also vitrification, right? Where stones appear to have melted and hardened into glass-like edges. In other words, the rock has been seared. It's been fused and re-solidified in ways that you can't explain with erosion. Now, normally erosion would wear away irregular shapes and any fragile structure over centuries. But when sediment deposits occur rapidly, they can perfectly preserve forms of whatever was buried. Now think of it this way, folks. When you compare modern sediment layers to ancient sediment layers, the ancient sediment layers often appear compressed. It's very uniform and it's consistent with forms that don't really show erosion, but preservation. And then you have this accumulation of sediment covering it. And that's where we live. So not only folks are we seeing the remains of a lost world, but we are living on the graveyard of it. And here and there you see the remains of the lost world sticking out of the surface. So in essence, what we see today could be the preserved remnants of something that existed before the catastrophe, carefully sealed by layers of sediment and time. Now, the last time I spoke on this topic or a similar topic, it was about how giants may have used a type of technology that was grown. And when you try and wrap your head around or tried to imagine a machine that has grown, what if those machines I was talking about were trees? But here's the overlooked question. What if giant trees didn't grow like trees do now? Almost every discussion about giant ancient trees assumes they behaved like modern trees, just bigger. Same biology, same structure, same limitations. But what if that assumption is what makes it less plausible? What if ancient trees weren't simply oversized versions of redwoods or sequoias, but more like living geological systems than plants as we understand them today? Instead of relying on capillary action to pull water upward, imagine a form of life that interacted directly with the atmosphere and the ground, exchanging energy, moisture, and minerals on a massive scale. In that scenario, the massive size would be how the system worked. Think of a giant tree as a massive power plant. Get it? Power plant. Now folks, with that said, here's something 
you are probably not going to hear on any other channel about this topic, and that is this. We know that tall structures interact with atmospheric electricity. Lightning rods are a modern example, right? A massive tree reaching high into the atmosphere could continuously exchange charge with the air, clouds, and ionosphere. And instead of resisting lightning, it would absorb and redistribute or what we call ground electrical energy safely through its internal structure. In that sense, it wouldn't generate power the way a modern power plant does. It would regulate and channel energy the way a transformer or a capacitor does in an electrical system. And now you have a source of electrical energy distributed in the root system that could be tapped into. And not only that, they're going to have the ability to control humidity, influence rainfall, stabilize temperatures, and shape the ecosystem. A forest of colossal trees could theoretically stabilize regional climates, and it would be managing the excess atmospheric energy during storms. With those giant trees in place, they would maintain equilibrium between the land, air, and water. Now here's the trick. If you remove that system suddenly, let's say you suddenly cut down all the giant trees, guess what happens? A catastrophe, because the planet would lose a major balancing mechanism. And so floods become more violent. Electrical storms are more chaotic and the landscape becomes unstable. Think about this. Many of the formations we call mountains behave like environmental regulators. They influence weather patterns, direct rivers, affect local magnetism. They impact cloud formation, right? Trees today already do this on a small scale. They regulate humidity, they stabilize the soil, they interact electrically with the atmosphere. Now take that and scale it up, way up. If something like that existed, it would change how we interpret everything. It would change how we interpret sudden climate shifts, global floods, and it would change why certain regions look like they were reset all at once anyway folks that's going to be all for now and there is more to come please click the thumbs up button for me on your way out let me know what you all think in the comments below everyone have a great day or evening and until next time stay awake stay aware stay safe and i'll talk to you all soon